Coming up on Arts District, we travel to the Anderson Ranch Arts Center to see furniture making in action. We'll explore the fashion of the West with the talented Fort Collins designer. Plus a performance from KUBO's Live at the Vineyards and more. I'm Michael Gavlin. And I'm Kate Perdoni. Welcome to Arts District from Rocky Mountain PBS. And welcome once again to my studio. I love being here. I love it too. Do you ever think of everyday furniture as being works of art? Woodworking students from around the world are drawn to the Anderson Ranch Arts Center in Snowmass Village. This creative space hosts a variety of classes where folks can explore their curiosity and push their skills. Arts District's Ram Shear brings us this story. Anderson Ranch Art Center has been sharing a passion for art since 1966. The center has been hosting artists and educating students in a variety of fields from painting to sculpting to 3D printing and even furniture making. Here at the ranch's workshop, students learn the fine art of creating unique pieces of furniture. Furniture design uh, is a very incredibly broad topic to, uh, to begin with. You know, on one end, there's high style design um, manufactured around the world, and then uh, another direction is more sort of uh, furniture as part of artistic expression. And that's is sort of the uh, area that we're working with here at the, uh, at the ranch. This class is an intermediate to an advanced class. The students are uh, coming in with a, you know, sort of a reasonable set of skills. This class is, uh, focuses on uh, getting them to look at furniture forms from uh, a more three-dimensional, a more sculptural perspective. We offer furniture at an art center because there's a, a different level of freedom here in doing uh, furniture design and woodworking. There's a creativity that is open to everything. Whatever it is that you want to accomplish, we will make that happen. One of these students is taking this opportunity to learn a new skill in order to further push her artistic expression in furniture making. Coming all the way from Canada, Emma Semp is building a chair in the workshop. I'm using this workshop to make a chair. I've built a couple chairs before, but I really wanted to jump back over that threshold in a supportive environment where I could take something on that was a little more ambitious and have my questions answered. The main benefit that I have um, gotten out of this workshop was to do some more steam bending. Michael Fortune specializes, he's very well known for curvature, for steam bending, and for chairs, and so that was my motivation for taking a course with him. So a lot of people in our class have been incorporating steam bending into their projects, and I think I've done four bends this week. So just getting to do that with him kind of like repeatedly has really helped drive home the concepts, the process, the techniques, and like the feel for it, so I can, I feel like a lot more confident taking that home and doing it on my own. So, how does furniture design fit into the arts? Furniture making fits into the arts uh, as a 3D medium. You know, when you start machining a board down, you start discovering uh, the wood grain, and then from there, you, you kind of have this freedom to create and, and move parts around. I think that furniture fits into the arts in a really interesting way because it is often seen as a bit outside in like a functional arts or studio, like fine studio craft way, but it has, I think, like a lot of interesting content to offer. There's so much potential for doing really sculptural stuff or for kind of questioning like your personal space and how you interact with sculpture every day or what is function. And ultimately, I think that fine furniture is, you're creating these objects that have give so much opportunity for people to connect with in their daily lives, which is kind of, I mean, what the arts are about as well. Uh, the thing I would like the students to leave with is that um, when they're um, uh, going forward with projects in the, uh, in the future, that they not be concerned about uh, designing to what they know, but designing to what they would like to know. For me, the exciting part about this is a, um, 
uh, pursuit. It's essentially open, open-ended. You can go in any direction, whatever you're interested in, um, uh, you can pursue that. The Anderson Ranch Art Center appears to be more like a creative lab. Yeah, they teach pretty much any art form you can imagine. Check them out. Up next, getting your Western flair on in a big way. If you don't already have your Western look dialed in, we've got some advice for you. Western wear is alive and well in Northern Colorado, thanks to a century-old store. And an up-and-coming fashion designer, Stephen Weiss, has this story. The country theme in Northern Colorado runs very deep here at the 123-year-old Masonville Mercantile, west of Fort Collins. And although they have just about everything in here, for the last 50 years, the store has developed a reputation for some of the most fashionable Western wear anywhere in the region. We have this nostalgic Western frontier theme to the building and also um, kind of an Americana feel, if that makes sense. Um, and so we're trying to keep that character of the structure itself. For many years, this has been a go-to place to find wedding dresses of all kinds, but there is so much more here for both men and women. From steampunk to Victorian, the store attracts a wide variety of loyal customers. I was so excited when I found it, and of course, as you can see, I just love their clothes, and they have so many different styles, um, and the people are lovely and warm and friendly, so it's just an exciting oasis of joy. I've traveled all over the world, and I think this is my favorite store. Oh, that's gorgeous. The Masonville Mercantile recently changed hands when the previous owners finally retired. It's a really nice story how it all happened because I didn't know this was here. And then my dad got me in the car and we drove here and he's like, I want to show you this really cool place. And I came in, walked around, talked with Marty, the previous owner, and I walked out and I was like, Dad, this place is amazing. And then he said to me, guess what, it's for sale. And the rest is history, basically. History is something the store is counting on, as locals are very aware of the unique nature of this store. I've been coming in here ever since I was a little kid, like four or five years old, and my mom and I would come up in here and we'd try on Kentucky Derby hats and play around. The new owners have big plans for the store. It may soon be a more prominent music and wedding venue, as well as an internet distributor of fashion. But they also plan on sticking with the style that has proven to be successful here for a very long time. Western will never go out of fashion. It's always going to be an amazing part of our country and also tells a lot about who we are. Everybody's trying to be so similar these days, but when you come up here, you're looking for something that you're gonna stand out in, something that you're gonna feel comfortable in and not everybody's gonna see you or see that on somebody else which is precisely the goal of Northern Colorado fashion designer, Megan O'Dell. She is designing clothes that very few people have in their closet. She's the owner and fashion designer for Livewire Clothing, specializing in unique Western-themed fashion. Grab your back of your dress and kind of like, like, yeah, fan it. She is also the co-owner of CM Modeling, whose models often wear her designs. CM uniquely provides models who are comfortable with Western lifestyle because that's who they are. A lot of our clients are Western-based clients, so people like Cinch or Miller International, Hobby Horse. So what we're providing is the same caliber of beautiful woman, um, but actually is rooted in Western industry. So if you wanted to throw her on a horse or stand her next to something that is portraying the Western lifestyle, they actually live it, breathe it, and do it. Megan grew up on the Southern Ute Indian Reservation in Ignacio, Colorado. Her degree at the University of Northern Colorado was not in fashion, but rather political Those are science. Good. That's good. Love that one. I like that a lot. Without formal training, she came to the fashion scene late, but has a keen and bold sense of what looks good, and others are noticing it as well. 
Cody Johnson's wife this year, Brandy Johnson, she needed a CMA gown. I created a custom gown. So the leather um, was pearlized. I made a complete leather custom look that was very personalized to her. Some really cool attributes of what they're trying to portray in his walk in country music. Her experience at the CMAs has thrust Megan onto the national fashion scene. They were walking down the carpet with a lot of individuals that are huge, like Zach Posen had done a garment for uh, Jennifer Nettles. So, you know, maybe they weren't standing next together, but my dress went down that same carpet Zach Posen's did. Um, so there's, there's that sense of, you know, I'm just a small town kid from the res who's trying to do some design work. I want to put my stuff out there and see and actually let people know, not only let people know, but prove to myself. Whether it's the Country Music Awards in Nashville, Tennessee, or Megan's home in Greeley, fashion design is about putting yourself out there and finding out what other people think of your ideas. Fashion is an art form and being bold enough to just be you because there's nothing more beautiful, truly beautiful, than a person being the best selves. It's not mimicking what they see and what Vogue or whomever says is pretty. It's truly, truly being your best self and there's nothing more gorgeous than that. If you're inspired to find your very own Western look, go check out the Masonville Mercantile website. And you can see more of Megan's fabulous designs at the link below. Now for a different kind of art making, Art Ocade. Have you ever heard of it? I have. It is a wildly popular annual festival in Trinidad. Celebrating the creativity of art cars. Now this is a parade of vehicles from golf carts to vans that are bedazzled with wild decor. And sometimes these rolling sculptures have an interesting backstory as we're about to see. This piece comes to us from Hannah Tran of the Colorado Springs Gazette. We were discarded. People who are worthless to society. Dehumanized because of the, the preconceptions that, that a lot of people have. Addiction and, and alcoholism in turn led me to prison. People often view guys who are in prison who've been locked up as some sort of less than human. But once everyone's here and you have those externals, you know, those external influences taken off of the individual, you're just left with a person that you know, has feelings and has emotions and imagination and creativity. They're repurposing themselves, they're repurposing their ideas, they're recycled human beings in a way that are giving a chance in which they can create something many things in this whole art car world, there are no um, precedents or real reference points. Um, one came as an email from someone at TCF, Trinidad Corrections Facility, exploring the possibility of having some of their inmates make an art car. What are you, crazy? You want to do what? In a secure prison environment? And it sounded appealing and impossible all at once. Articade's an art car festival, and people say, well, what's an art car? Well, just they're embellished vehicles of all kinds, cars, trucks, motorcycles, golf carts, bicycles. So Articade is just a big celebration of creativity by creating artfully kooky conveyances. The Articade uh, opportunity has done is to be able to work on something that is so, in my mind, so removed from prison, you know, because creativity is, you know, you don't put it in a box. You can't think about art inside of a box. And here we are, we're kind of in this box. You know, it, it comes from a very genuine 
human place. <laughs> you know, human creativity is and whatnot really is what separates us from the animal realm. You know, I was substituting my creative outlets for alcohol and drugs, and so it was often a, a way for me to recover, to, to find recovery. It's given me that pause that I need to make the right choice, because in my past what I've done is make the wrong choice. There are no mistakes in art. There aren't. To me, this is freedom. I never would have thought I'd been able to do this in my life, and this is the greatest thing I've ever done. Doing an art car, um, well, I don't think there's any other facility in the nation doing that at all. Well, the idea came on the very first art arcade. Um, I actually was out on um, the parade route. I looked up and I just was like, you know what, the men here, they can do this. Sawdust, pine cones, pine cone needles, rocks. It was pretty unique. They're using another part of themselves in a way that they had no anticipation, any more than when a soda can is made, that eventually it's going to end up being a piece of art. You can use that, that kind of rudimentary energy that may stem from like a creative mind to do something interesting, to repurpose something. Imagine if that garbage came to life and had something to say. This experience has, has reinvested a heartfelt drive to continue to make art as a way to speak to the world explore affirms personal meaning, purpose, and a belief in all beauty of life. So we search for an outlet, a way to express, showcase our talents, and get a taste of success. painted with beer caps, beauty, or mess. Just know it comes from the organ that bumps in our chest. We were discarded into, into prison. But then to be able to find a, a purpose here, it's really like a, a portal to reality for me. This was a big black hunk of nothing, and it's like beautiful now. Rodney Wood is such a cool dude. He is so much fun and an inspiring guy, and I love that the idea of community for him is all-encompassing. Such a vibrant and energetic use of materials. For more on Trinidad's Art Arcade event, check out their website. For many artists, there can be a disconnect between creating and marketing their art. So much time and attention go into the artistic process that many artists feel the business aspect is better left to someone else. New York artist Cordell Cadaro does not hesitate to bridge that mysterious intersection of art and business. In fact, he thrives off it. Our partners at WXXI in Rochester bring us the story. My name's Cordell Cordaro, I'm a Rochester, New York artist, and we're in Blue Wolf right now where my art is up. I've been doing art for about nine years, full time, as a career, and I love it, it's my passion. My artwork is kind of abstract in nature, um, in the sense that I'm not trying to portray a still life or uh, like a realistic painting, I'm really trying to capture an idea or an emotion, kind of inner emotions coming out. And um, I think people vibe with that when they see my artwork.
There's also lots of color. I just think it grabs people's attention and, and also shows my kind of my passion for, for life really in general. And, and that in itself inspires me and I think that inspires people when they see my artwork. I've always been an artist. I went to art school, Alfred University, Art and Design, and really a little bit after that, I, I don't think I was focused on an art career, uh, not till maybe my mid-20s, at which point I started to seek out opportunities to sell my artwork, and uh, local gallery, museum, artists and works was a huge part of that. They started buying my paintings, and I kind of went from being just an artist kind of knowing I'm an artist but not really doing much outside of just my own drawings and paintings to really working at it, selling them, and thinking long term. And it was kind of like a metamorphosis in my life. It opened me up to the business side of art. Business surrounds art in my opinion and it's really, artists have a chance to be part of, a, it's a multi-billion dollar global mar art market, so it's out there. And, and so artists have the opportunity to be part of that. And I think being an entrepreneur, artists are positioned perfectly because they have imagination. If people say no, you say yes, and you know, you keep moving forward and, and doors open. If you go a kind of a gallery route, you're kind of giving the reins to somebody else, so you don't have to worry about that. You kind of concentrate on just the art, but you're not, you're not putting yourself in a position to, to meet new people, really face-to-face, -face and sell your work and what's involved in that, you know, pricing and getting paid and how are you going to get paid and the transactions. It's rewarding for me to be doing that as well. I think if you want to make money from your creativity, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. It's really about creating stability and security in your own life, financial stability and security. So why wouldn't you do that, you know? And it's also more empowering because you're taking control of your own life. When you're selling artwork, you naturally get a you naturally know what sells and what doesn't, and that might also go to the selling out thing. I don't think it's ever selling out, but you have to be careful, kind of towing the line of creating art that you know works for you and is also something that you'll be able to sell in the future. Money isn't the center of it. The art is, is the center, so that's always the number one. That's the passion. And I think if you put money first, you're gonna have problems. For me, uh, like my path is, is that I'm as much of an entrepreneur, I feel like, as an artist. So that to me is the business side of it. I love his use of color and the way he draws his figures. It's really fun. Now we're going to hear some cool sounds at KUVO's annual event, Live at the Vineyards. Take it away. Thank you. 
your worries on the doorstep. Life can be so sweet on the side of the street that's sunny. Can't you hear a bit of that? Yeah, it's that happy tune in your step. Just direct your feet to the side of the street that's sunny. I used to walk in the shade with those blues on parade. And honey, I'm not afraid of this road we cross over and if I ever, ever get another sense Thanks for joining us on this episode of Arts District. You can check us out online and on Instagram. I'm Michael Gavin. And I'm Kate Fredoni. Until next time, make it easy. But make it. <laughs>